Okay, the top. Gross national na national product, the total market value of final of all final goods and services pro produced within a given period of by factors of production owned by by country citizens, regardless of where the output is produced. Okay, so uh, we studied the gross domestic product. Now, what's the meaning of a gross national product in Arabic? A gross domestic product, a natij al mahali al ijimali. A gross national product again. So a gross national product, a natij al qawmi al ijimali. What's the difference between them? So gross domestic product goods produced within the border regardless of the nationalities so abdul aziz who is a citizen and salim who is an expatriate or foreigner but we ignore alia hassan operating in london with a gross national product take gross domestic product and add income earned from abroad, such as Alia Hassan, she's going to send her profit to the UAE. And Salim, who is operate within the border of UAE, is going to send something called remittance. He will transfer some money to his family abroad. So gross national product in the end production made by citizens regardless of where whether they are working inside uae or abroad but the gross national product doesn't include contribution of foreigners working in the uae so again a gross later i will give you a list of equations in the file called calculations, you can find it in LMS. So how to calculate a gross national product equals a gross domestic product plus income sent from abroad by citizens minus income sent to abroad by foreigners working in the UAE. Now, Till now, what we explained, the gross domestic product can be calculated upon a production approach. A production approach includes two methods. Final goods or the sum up of all value added. Both of them concentrate on production. But also we can calculate a gross domestic product on expenditure approach or income approach. Just uh, in very simple way. All these three approaches reach to the same conclusion, the same gross domestic product. What's the difference between them? Let's take very simple example. Assume Abdullah Isa has a farm. He produced tomatoes worth of 100 dirhams. So this is production approach. He sold tomatoes to Muad. Muad spent 100 dirhams to buy tomatoes produced by Abdullah Isa. So according to expenditure approach, since Muad spent 100, production equals 100. Okay, Abdullah Shamsi, Abdullah Isa will earn 100 dirham for selling his tomatoes for 100 dirham. 100 dirham will be distributed among factors of production. Labor will take, for example, 40 dirhams as wages and capital will take the profit of 60 dirhams.
the total is called income. So income earned by the farm equals 100. So no, no, a single dirham will go to the ground. So production equals expenditure equals income. So uh, Abdullah Isa is not with me. Let's go to Abdullah Shamsi. He, what's your name? Abdullah Hassan Shamsi. Abdullah Shamsi. Abdullah Shamsi, go ahead. Expenditure approach. <coughs> A method of computing uh, GDP that measures the amount spent on all final goods during a given period. Okay, so what is expenditure ab approach? Spending to purchase goods and services produced in the UAE within a year. So what is gross domestic product? Goods produced in UAE within a year. What is expenditure approach? Spending to purchase these goods. Abdullah Shamsi. Yes, doctor. Go ahead. Income approach. A method of computing GDP that measures the income, wages, rents, interest, and profits received by all factors of production in producing final goods. Okay, so when we produce final goods within a year, we received income. Income will be distributed among factors of production. Labor will take wages, capital will take a profit. So I will go, I will not go into the details. So we have more than labor and capital. So uh, let me go back to or come back to expenditure approach. Expenditure approach is very important for economic analysis. What are the component of GDP according to expenditure approach? You will see an important equation underneath of the slide. GDP according to expenditure approach equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M between two practices. So thank you, Abdullah Shamsi. Let me go to Raja. Raja, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam, doctor. Uh, read this from the beginning. Uh, the expert expenditure the expert to char uh, approach there are four uh, main uh, categories of uh, expand to char uh, expenditure categories is personal conservation expense to char C a uh, house uh, hold uh, spending on the consumer goods uh, gross uh, private uh, domestic uh, investment Spend it by firm and uh, household on a new capital, i.e. plant uh, equipment, uh, inventory, and a new uh, residential residential structure. Uh, government uh, compensation and gross invest investment. Uh, next export uh, EX minus IM uh, net uh, spending by the rest of the world or export uh, means import. Okay, so as Raja said, a gross domestic product according to expenditure approach equals consumption plus gross investment plus government expenditure plus net export. Net export equals export minus import. So the sum here is called aggregate expenditure to purchase goods produced 
domestically. I will go into each term quickly. So uh, as you see here, according to the United States of America, consumption spending takes 75 percent. So mostly from 70 to 75 percent spending to purchase goods produced domestically. A gross private investment takes around 15 percent plus minus. Government expenditure takes also 15 percent minus plus. Net export may be zero, negative or positive. I will go into details. The sum will be 100 percent. So if you go. Yeah, personal co um, consumption, uh, consumption expenditures, um, uh, a major component of GDP expenditures uh, by cons consumers on goods and services. OK, so the first. Biggest component of aggregate expenditure is called consumption by families. It seems to be most of our production on consuming goods. Uh, consumption can be categorized into three components. Durable goods such as refrigerators. Non durable goods such as food. And services such as education and medical care. So what is durable goods? Goods that lasts more than one year. Such as housing appliances, refrigerator and TV and cars, which serve the families more than one year. So durable goods are consuming goods because households purchase refrigerators, TVs, cars for their final usage, not for further processing to produce something else. Then durable goods, food and clothes, which can be consumed fairly quickly within a year. Also, it is consuming goods. And the third part is called surfaces or intangible things such as education, medical care, legal consultancy, entertainment. OK. So in 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 rich countries, in rich countries. Which category is the most important, which takes the highest percentage of our income in rich countries? Services. Services in rich countries. Most of our income goes to services. But in very poor countries, goes to non durable goods such as food. So since we live in the UAE, UAE is a rich country. So if you check, if you make budget for your income, you will realize that most of your income goes to cover surfaces. So surfaces also are important. But in poor countries, they don't have money for legal consultancy or entertainment or even education and medical care. So they spent mostly on food. And if they manage to earn a bit more money, they will go to offer simple shelter for them, simple house for them. So the, the third uh, category is called services. Now let's go to gross investment. A gross investment. Maha? Maha is not with me. Yes, Let I'm with you, but I cannot read because I'm sick. OK, let me go to Munira. Yes, doctor. Munira, read this for me. 
Cross Private Domestic Investment. Cross Private Domestic Investment, total investment and capital that is purchase of the new housing, plants, equipment and inventory by the private or non-government sector. Okay, so what's the meaning of gross investment? Gross investment, total amount spent by business sector to add new machines. So a gross investment can be categorized into three categories. Non-residential investment, residential investment, and a change in business inventory. Let me start with the first one with Munira. Non-residential investment. Non-residential investment expenditures by firms or machines, tools, plants, and so on. Okay, so one, what is the meaning of non-residential investment? Al-istithmar غير السكني. So spending by business sector to add new machines, to expand their projects or to set up a new projects new firms. So this is called non-residential investment. The second one is called a residential investment. Al-istithmar sakani with Munira. Expenditures by household and firms or a new house and apartment buildings. Okay, so expenditure by households and firms to add a new housing units to build a new houses, a new apartments. This is called residential investment. Okay, in poor countries, in poor countries, which categories is most important or which categories takes most of our investment? Non-residential or residential investment? I think none. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, residential investment takes if we if poor countries manage to save a little money after covering their basic needs such as food, they will spend their saving to build simple shelters or houses. So, uh, residential investment takes a good part of total investment. Let me change the equation. Which category is most important to economic growth? Which category is most important to increase output? The answer is a quiet. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Alia. Alia, well done. So non-residential investment, because when we add new machines, we will be able to produce more output. And this is much more needed in poor countries to increase their output. But unfortunately, they don't have appropriate shelters or houses and they they have a little savings for this reason poor countries needs international financial aids to build new projects okay the third category of investment is called a change in business inventories التغير بالخزين. So the first, the third category of investment called a change in business inventory, Munira. The amount by which, <coughs> sorry, the amount by which firms inventories change during a period 
inventories are the good that firms produce now, but an need to sell later. Okay, so what is uh, a change in business inventories is important for economic analysis, as we will see later. So a change in business inventory will give us an indicator what we should do in the future. Let's take an example. Let's take an example. Simple example from microeconomics. Assume Munira, according to her expectation about demand, she decided to produce 100 cars, 100 cars. Unfortunately, during the year, demand is lower than her expectation. She managed to sell only 80 cars. She managed only 80 cars. What will happen to change in business inventory? What will happen to her inventory? Increase or decrease? Decrease. Uh, instead of selling 100, she's only going to sell 80, so it will uh, it will decrease. OK, again. Munira produced. 100 cars. According to her expectation during the year. Did, uh, can you see the cursor? During the year, she managed to sell only 80 cars because demand suddenly became less than her expectation. She produced 100, she sold 80. What will happen to her inventory? An increase or decrease? 20 will be left in the inventory if she wants to sell 80. An increase or decrease? Decrease. Her inventory will increase by 20. So she will add a 20 unsold cars to her inventory. What do you well, expect she's going to do by next year? Is she going to produce more or less? The answer is less. At least to uh, release or to decrease the inventory. Another example. Assume Munira produced 100 cars. According to her expectation, fortunately, demand during the year becomes so high. She sold 110. She sold 110 cars. What happened to her inventory? Decrease. Her inventory decreased by? 10. 10, ten cars by 10 cars. What do you expect she is going to do by next year? She is she is going to, to produce more or less? More. more. She's going to produce more. So a change in business inventory will give us an incentive what we should do by next season. For this reason, I said important. Why we add a change in business inventory? There are many reasons. Uh, I will leave it in the end of the chapter. But now, uh, uh, when I say a plus 20 cars, who will finance the additional cars? So it's part of the investment to invest to cover the cost of additional new cars added to the store. If we ignore a change of business inventories, so I will 
consider final sales as GDP, and it's not true. See here, once demand is good, she's we sold 110, but actually our production is 100. So we have to say a change in business inventory minus 10 to adjust to calculate the real estate of gross domestic product. If the sales 80, but the production is 100. So if you demand on total sales, you will underestimate gross domestic product. Sales 80, production 100. But when you add the increase in business inventory, you can get accurate account of gross domestic product. For this reason, we add a change in business inventory when we calculate gross domestic product. This is a summary of a question in the end of the chapter, why we add a change in business inventory when we calculate a gross domestic product according to expenditure approach, because final sales cannot give us accurate prediction on the state of a gross domestic product without taking into consideration a change in business inventories, whether it is positive or negative. We are still with gross investment. Now, depreciation. Now, Jawahar, are you with me? Jawahar is not with me. Let's go to Alia Hassan. Alia Hassan, are you with me? Yes, Doctor. MashaAllah, Alia Hassan, well done. Depreciation, Alia Hassan. The amount by which an asset, asset value falls in a given period. OK, see here, uh, assume I bought a car, a new car. Worth of 100,000 dirhams. What do you expect its value after one year? It will be more 100 or less? It will be less than 100. Why? Because the car is depreciated physically by usage and technologically it becomes an old fashion. So this is called depreciation. What's the meaning of depreciation in Arabic? Another word, yes. It's a true. Another word. Depreciation. Yes, yes. Al indithar. Al indithar or al ihlak. Okay. So, uh, Alia Hassan, go ahead. Gross investment. The total value of all uh, newly produced capital goods plant, equipment, housing, and inventory produced in a given period. Okay, so what is a gross investment? Total spending to add new machines for non-residential, residential investment, and, and a change in business inventory. It's different than net investment. What is net investment? A gross investment minus depreciation. So again, this is another equation. Net investment equals gross investment minus depreciation. See here for this interesting equation. Capital in the end of the period. So let's take an example. Assume Ali Hassan has a Pepsi Cola factory. So in the end of the year, she has 10 machines. Capital in the beginning of the period, in the beginning of the year, she has 10 machines. 
So she spent her life to build the Sikola factory, including 10 machines. Okay, what she did during this year? First, a gross investment, she spent an amount to add new machines. This is a gross investment. What is depreciation? The depreciation on all capital goods, all machines will be depreciated. Let's uh, say simply, the depreciation of 10 machines worth as money equals to the value of one machine. So what is the net investment? Two new machines minus depreciation of one machine. So what will be the capital in the end of the year? Capital in the beginning of the year, 10 machines, a plus gross investment, two machines, minus depreciation of one machine. So capital in the end of the year equals 11 machines. So again, I will give you another example. I will not spend more time about this example. It is a sad story. During 1990s, Iraq was under the penalties of United Nations. He, uh, the Iraq was not allowed to export oil, so the country became so poor. But during 1970s, when oil prices become so high, we spend lots of money to build capital. So the capital in the country is huge. So assume the value of capital is 1000 dirhams. The value of capital in 1995, 1000 dirhams. Now, because we are under penalties of the United Nations, we are not allowed to export oil. Our income becomes so weak. We manage to save a little money to invest a little money. Assume we manage to invest 100 dirham. 100 dirham is our gross investment. But because the capital is a huge 1000, the depreciation is a 20 percent. So the value of depreciation 200. Calculate the value of net investment. Gross investment 100, depreciation 200. So net investment will be minus 100. Right? Calculate the capital in the end of the year. Equals, uh, well done, equals 900. Why? Uh, from the beginning, capital in the beginning of 1995, 1000, plus gross investment 100, minus depreciation 200, capital in the end of the year 900, which is less than the capital in the beginning. So what does it mean? That means Iraqis during 1990s started to consume their machines, which were built previously, because our income is so poor, so little. So it is a sad story. It is a sad story. So we need to invest in a huge amount to cover first depreciation and then to increase the existing capital. Let's go to uh, the third part of expenditure approach, which is called government. Government expenditure, government spending, government purchases, 
or government consumption and gross investment. All these terms are exchangeable. So what is government expenditure? Spending by government, whether it is federal or state, to purchase final goods and services. How many governments do we have in the United Arab Emirates? How many governments do we have in the United Arab Emirates? Two? No. Seven? No. One? No. So it is eight. One federal government and seven local governments. So spending by all level of governments is called government expenditure. Now, net exports. Let me see if I put here a question. No, there is no question. Net export. Uh, uh, the difference with net ex exports, the difference between exports, sales to for uh, to foreigners, foreigners, foreigners. Uh, of UAE produce goods and service uh, and uh, imports UAE purchase of, go of goods and uh, service from uh, abroad. The vigor can be positive or negative. Okay, so what is net exports? equals export minus import. So this is fixed equation. Net exports equal export minus import. So if export more than import, the result will be positive. If import is higher, the result will be negative. If they are equal, the result will be zero. Net export will be zero. Here there is an important question. Why do we add net exports to the system of calculating gross domestic product according to expenditure approach? This is one of discussion questions in the end of the chapter. But now you need to understand it. I'm looking for the equation. OK. See here why we add net export. When we calculate gross domestic product according to expenditure approach, why do we add export and deduct import? Because to calculation import. of gross domestic product. What's your name, mom? Lana. Lana. Lana, if you answered correctly to this question, I will give you from now a star because you earned the A. I'm not sure, but because imports, they are things that not produced within the border of UAE from not our resources. They come from outside. Okay. While, while exports are things we have already produced within the border. Yeah, do you know most, uh, unfortunately, Lane. Most students answer in the way you explained now in the previous exams, for example, last semester, and this is not the accurate answer. Can you give us a clue, doctor? Yes, 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 I, I will. I will give you see here. Why do we add export? So if we don't add export, what will happen to gross domestic product? Assume our gross domestic product is 100, 100 dirhams. So part of our production consumed or purchased as we uh, we, we produce uh, houses and machines and purchased by business sector or we produce goods purchased by the government. Part of our production not consumed locally, such as oil, 
it's sold abroad. So if we ignore, if we don't add export, Underestimation. We will the... we will underestimate well done, Lana. We will underestimate the gross domestic product. See here in the United Arab Emirates, a huge part, a high percentage of oil production sold abroad. Not consumed locally. We consume 10 percent of oil production, but we export 90 percent. So if we don't add export, we will underestimate a gross domestic product. We will not calculate gross domestic product accurately. We will underestimate. What about import? Why we why why do we detect import? Not only ignoring import, why do we have to detect import? The to answer adjust. is yes. To adjust and to adjust and not uh, overestimate estimating the GDP. The same what you have done in the number of sales and uh, in change in inventory. Why? How? How? How and why? Uh, because imports, they are consumed locally inside. So we have to deduct it to adjust and not uh, overestimate. So you are Lana, right? Yes, doctor. Well done. Well done, Lana. God bless you. God bless you. Tell your mom and dad that Dr. Salim is happy with you. Please tell them your mind is so clean. Your mind is so clean. Well done. OK, so as Lana said, why do we detect imports? Because see here, let's take example of consumption. Consumption spending by households in the UAE. Do you think we we all we uh, purchase only goods produced domestically? The answer no. Part of our spending on imported goods. So assume the consumption equals 70 dirhams. So 40 for goods produced locally. 30 is goods imported. So a gross domestic product doesn't include the whole 70 and includes only the 40 goods produced domestically. We have to deduct the 30 dirhams from consumption. So for this reason, when we deduct imports, as we readjust the level of consumption, so consumption will not be any more 70, it will decline by imports. So the rest, C, I, G, and X, will be left for goods produced domestically. For this reason, we have to detect. What will happen if we don't detect imports? So as Lana said, we will overestimate a gross domestic product. So we will take consumption as 70, but the true one is 40 because this is the goods produced domestically, but 30 goods produced abroad. So if we don't detect imports, we will overestimate. We will exaggerate the level of a gross domestic product. For this reason, we have to add exports and deduct imports when we calculate a gross domestic product according to expenditure approach. We finished at the moment the expenditure approach.